Rated everyone 10 and up. Mothership systems active. We have full neural integration. All systems are coming online. We've updated your command interface so you'll be experiencing higher resolution and more details and visual fidelity. You should feel a sensation of streaming information. As Fleet Command, your mind is wired to sort, analyze, and act upon all this incoming information. Your role will be dealing with the life and death decisions based on the protection of the mothership, and most importantly, her cargo. The 600,000 cryogenic pods that contain our people, destined for the home world. To assist in making the best tactical decisions, you now have access to the Sensors Manager. The Sensors Manager provides you with a tactical overview of the surrounding area. It details information on the fleet's position, movements, and any hostile targets. Our journey will be perilous. It takes us through an asteroid field and to the very heart of the galaxy. We don't know what's out there, but we are prepared. To defend against possible attacks, the mothership is fitted with an onboard shipyard that produces a full range of offensive, defensive, and non-military support vessels. The fleet's offensive capabilities are carried out through strike craft, frigates, and capital ships. Strike craft are divided into two categories. First being fighter class ships, such as the Interceptor or Fighter. These ships are designed for precise assault, support, and reconnaissance duty. This ship class being the smallest in the fleet possesses maneuverability and speed. They can evade slower weapons and carry out missions that would otherwise be too dangerous for larger ships. The second strike craft category is Corvette class. These ships, like the multi-gun Corvette, are designed for escort and light combat duty. Their firepower and armor is stronger than those of a fighter, and as such, they are designed to work in squadrons to overcome larger ship classes. As we move into the larger ships, first we have the frigates. These ships are deployed in large groups and have significantly less armor than the larger capital ships. Frigates rely on speed and maneuverability, along with strong firepower to be effective against both large ships and strike craft. Lastly, we have the most powerful ships in the fleet, the capital ships. Slow and expensive, like the Destroyer, these massive ships are constructed individually and take an immense amount of resources and time to produce. Once deployed, a capital ship can outclass all other vessels with its firepower, armor, and size. To maintain the building requirements of the fleet, we will need to harvest resources in the form of asteroids, nebula, and any other salvageable space debris. You will need to deploy resource collectors to areas that are rich in resource units, or RUs. Resource controllers can be stationed alongside a resource collector to increase its harvesting potential. All ships under your command have full use of three-dimensional space and can be moved along both the horizontal or vertical axis. This differs from some of the ground combat exercises you may have done before and allows for far more freedom in your strategy and tactics. Instead of engaging enemies head-on, you can ambush them from above or below. Within your combat interface, you can assign hotkeys to quickly move between important vessels. It's important to remember that any craft you construct will accompany us across hyperspace jumps, unless they're destroyed. This will be key in amassing our fleet and armada across the journey. It will be your decision that will order the fleets. They await your command. We must now start our long journey to Higara. Mothership is ready. Initiate launch sequence at your discretion.
It's time to go home.